We're making limoncello today. Lemon cello. A bunch of lemons, a generous pour of vodka, a pinch of sugar or a little more and some water. And the net result is we're making the best lemon cello you've ever made, especially if you haven't made it before. Welcome to Sweet Spot. The absolutely craziest thing happened the other day. I grabbed a bottle of my lemon cello from the freezer and a nice glass. I popped the cork and proceeded to give myself a nice generous pour and nothing came out of the bottle. Time to make some lemon cello. That's not exactly true. There's no way that's true. I never actually run out of lemon cello. No surprise, lemons are the key ingredient to lemon cello. I find big, beautiful organic lemons at my grocery store. If you can't find organic, they'll work out. You'll need to wash your lemons and also need a big glass bottle. It has to be airtight and sized adequately for the job. Wash this too. Everything has to be washed. These lemons need to be zested. That means the peel comes off, but not the white pith that's inside the lemon peel. The pith will make the lemon cello bitter and no one will want to drink it. I found the easiest way to peel lemons is to pop open a paper bag and toss in the lemon, a single lemon. Close it up and then shake gently. Seriously, you believe this? And then open it up and dump out the lemon peel. And you'll end up with pretty much one or two pieces. Seriously, you believe this? In reality, you're gonna need a vegetable peeler and this is gonna take a little bit of time. And it's fine if the pieces are pretty small, but seriously, avoid the white pith. It will make the lemon cello bitter. So we end up with a great big pile of lemon peels and a bowl full of naked lemons that can be used to make lemonade or freeze the juice to make lemonade later. We put the peels in our clean jar Did I mention clean jar? Then we want to pour in our vodka, one and three quarter liters of vodka. That goes with the 14 lemons. I don't use a top shelf and I don't use a bottom shelf vodka. I use a medium middle of the road vodka. There's no reason to splurge on a top shelf vodka because I don't think it makes a difference. And I've never really tried a bottom of the shelf vodka. So, Save your pennies, go for a medium vodka. You do need 80 proof, that's 40% alcohol by volume. Otherwise, the formula is not gonna work out. The whole bottle. Some recipes call for using Everclear rather than vodka. Everclear is not vodka and they're not interchangeable. Everclear is typically 180 or 190 proof. That's 90 or 95% alcohol by volume, not the same as 40%. The next two steps. One is easy, we put on the airtight lid. And the second will take a little bit longer. We let the lemon peels steep in the vodka for 45 days. This allows the oils and all the flavors to extract themselves into the vodka. Store this in a dark, cool place. After this has steeped for 45 days, we'll have a nice lemony yellow citrus vodka. And three steps to take. Number one, strain the lemon peels from the vodka. I use a funnel and a regular coffee filter. If you can think of a better way, go for it. We want most of the lemon solids to be filtered out, but if some slip through, not a problem because we'll be filtering a little bit later. If the coffee filter clogs, switch to a new one. Sometimes I need two or three to get through the batch. 
Minimizing spillage maximizes the amount of limoncello we'll have. And step two, we need to make simple syrup. Equal parts sugar and water, boiled until the sugar is fully dissolved. Recipes in the YouTube notes below, as well as on sweetspotkitchen.com. When the sugar is dissolved, let the simple syrup cool completely. We don't want to add this while it's still warm. And then into a clean container, we want to mix the lemony vodka and the simple syrup. We're aiming for about 22 to 24% alcohol by volume. Put on the airtight lid and seal this baby up. We need to store this for another 45 days to let the flavors meld and mellow. Is another 45 days seriously necessary? I think it is. It mellows the limoncello, makes it go down nice and smooth. And I happen to have a batch of limoncello just finishing up its second 45 day period. We're getting to the end. I should hope so, this has been 90 days. Now all we have to do is filter and fill up our bottles. I use bottles with these flip tops. They seal extremely tightly and won't spill even in a freezer laying down. Clean bottles, remember, everything needs to be clean. A funnel and a coffee filter again. And rather than making this a precarious operation, I like to fill up a measuring cup or any kind of cup with a spout. And we fill our bottles. Can't wait. Time for the taste test, my favorite part. And I'm looking forward to this. I love limoncello. We ended up with a few different bottles of limoncello. I normally like to vary the size and shape of the bottle, particularly if I'm giving them as gifts. Also, I like to put on a label, personalized label. I love making the bottle special. Again, particularly if giving it as a gift or even serving at home. I have this bottle sitting in the freezer. I like to store my limoncello in a freezer just so it's ready to serve. Uh, again, with these tops, these bottle tops, you can lay the bottle down, nothing's gonna happen. So it's out of the freezer, the bottle's all frosty, not sure if you can see that. Now how do you drink limoncello? There's different ways. Some folks like to use a little shot glass. I don't think it's worth the trouble. You're not gonna drink this as a shot. You're gonna savor this, you're gonna sip it and really enjoy the flavors. You could use an old fashioned glass. I used to use these. A finger or so of limoncello in here. These are nice because some people want to dilute the limoncello a little bit. They can throw in an ice cube or two. Now at home, I typically serve the limoncello in these stemless champagne flutes. They're more than adequately sized. You'd never drink that much and be able to walk. They allow you to show off the beautiful color of your creation. Easy to hold and adds a touch of class. So my ice cold limoncello, and it shouldn't freeze in the freezer. There's enough alcohol in here. Again, about 22 to 24% alcohol by volume. A little pour. Love the color. I, I mean, this is, it's crystal clear. And smells delicious, very lemony. Um, delicious, really delicious. There's a there's a bite to it, but not too much of a bite. It's full of the lemon flavor, no doubt. It, it kind of tingles in your mouth, but it's not an alcohol burn. If you wanted more of a burn, use less simple syrup. This is a nice balance of sweetness and tartness from the lemon. And there are plenty of ways you can adjust the recipe. If you want the limoncello to be sweeter than the standard recipe, simply either concentrate more sugar into the simple syrup, increase the sugar without increasing the water, 
and you'll end up with a sweeter limoncello. If it's too sweet for you, which I think this is ideal, do the reverse. Add more water, reduce the amount of sugar in the simple syrup. The aging process, the 45 days, the filtering, the other 45 days, I think that really allows this limoncello to be super smooth. And if you've tried commercial brands that are available, you'll note that some are smooth and some are not. Some are super strong with a higher level of alcohol, a higher percentage. But this, if I say so myself, this is a perfect balance. Very nice. Can't wait to have some folks over to share this. If you enjoyed this video, make the recipe. I'm sure you'll be satisfied. This is so good. Give us a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know how yours turns out. If you're not a subscriber, now's the time to subscribe. Hit the subscribe link below. Until next time, this is Sweet Spot. Sure, I'll answer questions. I love this stuff. Did I get this recipe from my Italian grandmother? Well, I'll tell you this. I did have two grandmothers. And while it does take 90 days to make, it's really not a lot of work. I mean, the hardest part, quite honestly, well, there's two hard parts. One is peeling the lemons because that does take a while. And the second part, obviously, is waiting the 90 days. Keeping the math, 45 days plus 45 days, that's 90. That's not really that difficult. And then is this an authentic recipe from Italy? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, I have been to Italy. Sure, I, I live in Pennsylvania and you're allowed to bring your own bottle, BYOB. You can bring a bottle of wine or liquor. Often at a BYOB, I'll bring a bottle of lemon chalo to share with friends at dinner. Ask the staff in the restaurant to put it in the freezer while we're enjoying our meal. Oh, I always have some going in the basement. I mean, it is 90 days, so you have to plan ahead when you're running a little bit low. Start up another batch. And it's really popular with our friends. Sure, go over. Go to 91 days, go to 100 days, do it at 80 days. I've seen recipes online, I can't believe it. They do it in two days. There is no way it picks up that much lemon flavor. Oh, about 20 years ago, my very first time I had limoncello, we were at a nicer Italian restaurant, enjoying our meal, and the waiter brings over a shot, a glass a little larger than this, a shot of limoncello. I had no idea what it was, but he said it's from the gentleman in the bar, former coworker. I love the guy, but, but he's sitting at the bar, he sees, he sees me, I hadn't seen him for years, and he sends over limoncello. I, I didn't know what to do with it. It, it. I remember it being really strong, but delicious. And hence, fast forward, here we are, 2019, make lemoncello all the time. I love it.